Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to talk about the concept of the boiling point of water. Now it seems very simple, water reaches a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade and it begins to boil, but what exactly is going on? Why does it do that? So let's try to figure it out here. So let's say we have a pot of water, it's being heated up, I know it's a primitive heating system but there it is, a little candle adding heat to the water and so we're heating up the water molecules that are near the surface here where the heat is being administered Let's say that the general temperature of the water here is 80 degrees centigrade, but you know that close to the flame here, the water will be hotter. And what is going to happen is that as the water gets warmer and warmer, there's going to be some molecules in there that reach such a high temperature and so much kinetic energy within them that they will actually begin to vaporize right inside the liquid. So what happens then is it creates small little, what we call little micro bubbles, little regions within the water where the water wants to turn into a vapor. However, there's an atmospheric pressure pushing down on the water and that causes these little microbubbles to be squished back down and back down into water. So the, the atmospheric pressure doesn't really allow these bubbles to really form and blossom. Anytime a few molecules try to form a, a, a microbubble, atmospheric pressure squishes it back down and so that prevents the water from beginning to boil. So the heat simply just gets distributed within the water and slowly the temperature of water continues to increase at 81, 82, 83 degrees and so forth. Of course at all times you'll still have what we would call evaporation. The molecules near, near the very top, they do have at times enough kinetic energy to jump free from the cohesive bonds of the other molecules and of course there will be condensation at the same time but at very high temperatures definitely the rate of evaporation will far exceed the rate of condensation and so water molecules will evaporate but the water will not be boiling. What happens now when finally the water reaches 100 degrees centigrade, assuming that outside it is atmospheric pressure? What happens now is those little micro bubbles, they begin to grow. So much heat is being added to the water that once the, the water container, all the water within the container now reaches 100 degrees centigrade, those the, any additional heat being added to the water is not used to increase the temperature of the water but it's now used to turn the water into vapor because at that point when the water reaches 100 degrees centigrade they have so much kinetic energy that they will actually push each other away and turn into little bubbles of vapor and you can start seeing all the bubbles of vapor to, to start in the water because the water molecules are so energetic at 100 degrees centigrade that they actually will turn into to, um, vapor with any additional heat given to them. Of course it does take energy. The enthalpy of evaporation, uh, of vapor I should say, vaporization, that's a better way to say it, the delta H for vaporization is equal to 40,790 joules per mole. So before an entire mole of water molecules turns to vapor you will have to add 40,790 joules. So the rate at which water is being vaporized in this matter because boiling is a form of vaporization at a high speed it all depends upon how fast you can turn you can put that extra heat into the water. So let's say that every minute you can put 40,790 joules of energy into the water then every minute you would turn one mole of water into vapor and that vapor then would escape out the pot and you could then slowly see the water level drop. So since the pressure inside here is now equal to the atmospheric pressure because that's what happened. The vapor pressure can be the same as atmospheric pressure at 100 degrees centigrade. The atmospheric pressure can no longer squish the bubbles and the bubbles go to the top and they escape into the atmosphere. You can see the water bubbling at the very top but all that is is the, these uh, bubbles of vapor rising to the top, bursting through the surface and releasing the vapor into the atmosphere and that's what then turns water into vapor at a high rate, the rate at which you can administer the heat to the water and that's what we call boiling. So if the atmospheric pressure were to drop then this will actually happen at lower than 100 degrees centigrade because then the pressure in the bubbles doesn't need to reach 760 millimeters of mercury which is atmospheric pressure but it can be less than that. For example if you go up in the mountains or to high elevations where the pressure is less water will boil at lower temperatures because the atmospheric pressure then is lower and the pressure that needs to be created within these bubbles to be able to survive and rise to the top does has not to match the lower pressure that's in the atmosphere and so therefore that can now happen at lower temperatures and that's the secret about boiling water.